As recently as 1958, human zoos were still a thing in the West. You heard that right. During a time when your grandparents were alive, minorities, mostly black and Asian, were exhibited across many cities to display the savage and primitive way of life they were described to have. But how did it come to that? Trying to live their own lives as best as they could, many factors played a role in the emergence of these so-called ethnological expositions, which ultimately was a hindrance to their overall freedom. A Western superiority complex that was only furthered through the exposition of a poor and uncivilized lifestyle was one of them. Traveling without going there to see savagery as described by the explorers and adventurers through tales and recollections was another, though these sorts of expositions were by no means a newfound trend. One of the earliest known zoos, that of Moctezuma in Mexico, consisted not only of a vast collection of animals, but also exhibited humans, for example dwarves, albinos and hunchbacks. And while such exhibitions of humans started off as part of a circus or a freak show, the more recent adaptations were to display further proof of colonial inferiority providing an increased justification for their subjugation. Additionally, the general controversy over their demeaning, derogatory and dehumanizing nature, their objectification and lack of privacy and respect was present, but not enough to warrant an instant termination. The last involuntary human zoo was exhibited in 1958 Brussels. Since then, voluntary examples of such human exhibitions existed, but not to further propagate the original intentions, although its purpose remained of touristic nature. The existence of human zoos serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of racism, cultural superiority, and the exploitation of vulnerable populations. It highlights the importance of acknowledging the inherent dignity and equality of all human beings, irrespective of their background or ethnicity.